Hello, people. How you doing today? Uh, took the day off yesterday and enjoyed watching some UFC fights. And today I just decided that I'm going to do a show and I'm going to talk about Tommy Karate Patera. And the main reason I chose him it's kind of an interesting thing. It's like, I, you know, I did Roy DeMeo last week. That that had a little controversy with his son, who is dead. Uh, so I was talking about what a serial killer Roy DeMeo was. And then people said, hey, Lee, um, Tommy Crotty was right there with him. I didn't believe it. And one thing I don't pretend to be is a mob expert. You know, when I look someone up, you know, I may know basic things about Tommy Patera, but I don't know this full story of him. So everything I learn is new. So I enjoy learning new stuff. And when you read about people, it's like you sit back and go, holy shit. Uh, and Tommy Patera, Tommy Crotty Patera was a very different type of guy. Uh, and I'm going to get into that. But there's a couple other things. I want to wait until more people get in here. And there's a couple other things I want to talk about. But let me just say hi to who's here right now. Guys, you know, you're kicking ass out of this chat room already. I mean, there's a bunch of you in here having a big conversation going on. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to get on to talking about an, uh, a subject first before I get into Tommy Patera. Okay. Wrong pe uh, wrong number. Welcome. Harvest of the Sorrow. Uh, sorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, the Truth. Amber Alert. Buffalo Bill Show. Okay, let's see. Uh, Seymour Scagnetti, how are you doing? Danny Story, how are you doing? I see you here, and uh, you've been here a lot lately, and I appreciate it. The Truth, Adam Cademan, better known as the one and only John Wolf. Uh, let's see. Uh, just trying to pull out these names. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody here that's been here already. And you guys are having a big Joey Electric. How you doing? Okay. I'm just trying to catch up here. Then we'll get into the other subjects, people. Okay, Kay, how you doing? Bill Jordan, Simpin' Ain't Easy, Doo Doo Browns in Town, James Weldon, Jeff's Wig. Savario Mac, um, Macri, Savario Macri, I hope I said that correctly, the Albanian Syndicate, and uh, New Beginnings, uh, how you doing here, and I appreciate you showing up like always, Beantown 916, Cyborg Kitty, Brian Press, Honor Thy Word, okay, so I would caught up in that, I want to talk about something, if you guys have noticed, what I've done lately is I've been keeping my end of the bargain. I have been pulling up names. I have been trying to stay away from the controversy and the BS. But there's a certain person that can't do that. Angel Gotti, I'm talking about you. And I'm just going to be point blank with you. A lot of people write negative stuff in my chat room about you, Angel. And I purposely haven't been pulling it up, but you haven't been doing the same. And the other day I noticed that someone in your chat room pulled up uh, that um, I was begging for money for my dog. And then with that same laugh that um, Camilla Harris has, you sound just like her when you laugh. You thought it was funny. And you pulled that comment up. So let me explain something to you. When people go out of their way to be kind to other people. Now you talk about taking care of dogs and stuff. And you say, when people give money here, I give them to my dogs. If someone put together something to help me with my dog, Polly. A matter of fact, it was so kind that they, they probably saved Polly's life. Because I can get extra tests that I couldn't get financially. And it's not about being broke. It's about, it costs a lot of money when a dog gets older and gets sick. And you thought it was funny when somebody representing Ronnie G, let me explain something 
about people representing Ronnie G. And then they said that Ronnie G could pay his own bills. If you steal and rob from your community and build big houses to live in like an idiot, yes, you can have plenty of money when you go to prison and your family keeps your money. So don't try to say Ronnie G this, Ronnie G that. Same with you, Angel. Let me tell you something about my father. My father worked until he was in his 60s, had his lung cut out, and worked another seven years. Went to work and got up every day as a hardworking man. He knew what it was like to work. He didn't steal from his community. He didn't steal drugs. He didn't kill people. He was just a good man that married a bad woman. So when you gangster people start making fun of the hardworking Joe, be real. So you have a choice. You can keep pulling up your little remarks and keep making cracks and keep this going. But I have an idea. Why don't you show us that you can actually do a show without the drama? That's been the challenge. FBS has been sticking to his part. He has been pulling up parts. He hasn't been saying shit, but you just can't control yourself. So maybe you're the worst of all of us. So you can keep it up. Now you could do a show about this tonight. Call me a kitchen bitch or whatever you want to do. But that's just who you are. You try to pretend you're something you're not. And if you're going to laugh, really, get rid of the Kamala Harris laugh. You sound just like her. Keep up the good work, Angel. Keep pulling up remarks. And these are the results you'll get. These are the answers you will get back to you. Okay. And uh, that's that. I'm not going to talk no more about that. And... I'll keep my word to the other guy because he's been keeping his word. Now, why don't you try to do it? Okay, I'm going to drop the link. If anybody wants to come in before I start talking about Tommy Patera, you're more than welcome. There's the link right there. If I know you, you can come in. If I don't know you, I'm not going to bring you in. I just want to wait for a few more people to get here. Right now, we have 65. So we'll just see how far we can get on a Sunday afternoon. I'm going to read some of your comments now, people. John Wolf, FBS still on? No, I haven't even mentioned them. That's the reality of it. I'll keep my deal with him. He's been he's been keeping it with me. That's that. As long as he does it, if it goes otherwise, then it goes otherwise. That's just the way it goes. There's only one person right now not keeping their word because they're not capable of it. Yes, you know, that's the big thing. Everybody likes to threaten to dox people. They like to threaten to uh, pull up people's lives, talk about who's in their lives, talk about their children, and talk about all this thing because they're cowards. Maximilian, I got to I gotta agree with you on this. Who would she be without that last name? Just an annoying woman. Now she's an annoying woman with the last name of Gotti. See, now you have a show. Now you have a show to do. I, I gave you something to do, Angel. Now you go put together a nice show, call people kitchen bitches and stuff. And to the people that did help save my dog's lives... Thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Uh, and I, you know, any time I get with my dog, any extra time I get with Polly, I appreciate it. Because you know what? Humans kind of suck. You, uh, Kamala Harris has done, yeah, exactly. But at least K Kamala Harris doesn't come from a family of killers. Okay, back had the plug device, it died on me, I don't know. Tony V, uh, there are a lot of serial killers in the uh, white working class neighborhoods back, oh my gosh, there are, Tony V, 
there are so many <laughs> serial killers. It really came, serial killers really came to the forefront starting the 70s and, you know, Ted Bundy and those guys. And it seemed like most of them came from the, from the, uh, from the um, West, well, basically right above California, over to Utah, Oregon, those states. Constantly gone. Uh, well, Grant, what's up, bro? Uh, I dropped you the link if you want to jump in here, Bay 8th. Just wait, there are so many people that, yes, too many people sucking up to people. Oh my gosh. If I am docs after her saying that she better make sure I ain't docs, or the headlines will be, well, you know something, that's already happening, people. You know, we don't need no headlines. Tommy Crotty had Phyllis Birdie's head in his fridge. You know, Phyllis Birdie, how much pity, pity can you have for that woman? She kept being warned over and over. No, don't get me wrong. It's Tommy Crotty's uh, girlfriend's or common law wife's fault for keep going over there. She want, she chose to do the drugs. And Phyllis Birdie played, paid a horrible price. I mean, he literally kept her body parts. I mean, the head, he kept the head and he used to joke around and show it to people. Tommy Crotty uh, is some character in history. Amber Alert. Faith, I saw a comment on your Josie show, but I think my replay. Okay, I don't know what you guys are talking about there. That's all she does, people. That's it. That's her show. Her show started off good. She talked about interesting stuff. Every show now is talking shit about somebody. Every damn show. It does, and then she uses an excuse: "I'm defending my family." Why don't you give us some good information on your family instead of going after everybody? And you're going after me right now for no reason. Okay. Let's see. Joey Electric can't talk about Karen or she will make a two-hour show crying about <laughs> Joan, how you doing? You love that hat? You got me that hat. Joan is my sister. And yes, Joan, uh, I do appreciate that. My two sisters were in Florida and they got me this hat. And um, I uh, greatly appreciate it. But after all, they both got tons of money. They could buy hats and shit. You know, they're not poor like me. But anyway, Ohio seems to have a large amount, especially it's odd. Yes, yeah, certain states seem to have more serial killers than other states. You know, when you really think, I mean, just especially those uh, those uh, states from California over to Utah, everything above there. I mean, that's serial killer haven right there. We're on the march. FBS commie leftists are on the run. This is the Lee Cole Show with your host, Lee Cole. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you notice Grandma does is talk drama and just read comments. What a show. Yes. It's like. Talk about other stuff. Give us some stuff. I mean, God Almighty, you have you have interesting stuff. You come from an interesting family. Give us some stuff. Stop going after people. Because now it's at the point where you're just going after people for the sake of going after people. Bad angel, good angel. Give me a break. I will straight scream and shit all over the place. <laughs> okay, well, Grant, we know you don't take no shit, Grant, so you don't have to say anything. We just know, we know how you are, Grant. Okay. Dumbass move, she's going to have to make sure I... Well, listen, until your docs don't worry about it, Grant, whatever happens, happens. Uh... But don't worry about it. It's not like they could find too much shit. You're across the pond there. How much damage can they do to you? Cyborg Kitty. Hello, NB. Uh, I was on FBS, and he denies that he was making a profit and says that he would have a slow week, but that's all. You should do another show on it. Here's the reality of it, people. If people want to give him money, that's their business. He has the right to get money from people. We may not like it. But so what? 
Nobody's putting a gun to anybody's head and forcing anybody to give anybody money. No, I'm not sticking up for him, but I'm saying it's his show. And if those people want to give him money, God bless him. Why should it bother anybody? Anthony says, salute Joey Electric. I think she's done stuff behind scenes, but I do not believe she's down with FBS and Jimmy calling for feds to put Dominic Crea uh, away and trolls. I just can't believe that. But she didn't exactly go against it. When you really think about it, it was a lousy thing that was done. Jimmy Calandra went on somebody else's show and bragged that he has no problem working for the feds to put people in prison. Is that where we've gotten? So all I could say to people, if that's the case, don't even talk about John A. Light. If that's the case where you can have a show or have someone come on your show and talk that crap. You know, Listen to Dominic's last show. You People know Dominic and I disagree on things, but listen, his last show was actually a very good show. He explained it. He explained what these guys do and how when they get angry, how they threaten people. You know, I have a video full of Jimmy swearing at me, Jimmy telling me that, saying horrible shit about my brother. So, you know, I'm I found God and all that shit. It's all BS people. You know, it's the guys that rat. The guys that rat are the guys that just couldn't handle it. We're going to talk about that with, when we start talking about uh, Patera. Patera was given up by a guy that was facing a DUI charge. A guy that came from a, a, a mafia legacy gave up Tommy Patera because he was facing a DUI. And, he, and when he got arrested... He called for the cops to come in so he could talk to them. And he started talking about Tommy Patera and gave up Tommy Patera. And, you know, we'll talk about that. But see, he didn't, he wasn't even looking at no huge time. He just rolled over like it was nothing. Lee. I think she's secretly in love with you. But nobody's secretly in love with me. Either you love me or you don't. Okay. Do you know, uh, Lee, I think, okay, we wrote that. I'm just trying to keep up here before we get into the show, people. Uh, I don't even care about the lady. She's an old lady, uh, old woman, but don't threaten me. Okay. Well, Anthony says, salute. She never defends JTP or MRE when they get bashed regularly. That makes me suspicious. You know what? <laughs> Those two guys do get bashed. JTP and MRE get, play, you know, bashed, and so does uh, uh, Mob Talk Radio. Uh, he gets bashed. There's just certain people that get bashed on a regular basis, and of course I do because you know I'm just a stupid old man. But that's fine. We push back. Exposes the dark and the legal. Yes. Come try to lock them, helmet boy. And let me tell you something about Dominic. I don't talk to him out in the opening. I send him emails. He always answers my emails, whether he disagrees with me or not. We had an argument about a month ago through emails, but we kept it by emails. He never came out and talked about it. So, you know, he is the type of guy you can email to and talk to him if something's bothering you. So you got to give him that credit. And when I have something bother me about uh, we push back, I just send him an email and he gives me his answer and we debated a little bit. That's how I deal with Dominic and that's how he deals with me because why put it out in the public? And I don't have to worry about him taking my emails and talking about them. Some people love to do that shit. You can't trust nobody. You can't email nobody because then they'll give up your email and start talking about it. How many people have done that to me already where I've sent them emails and private conversations? And what do they do? They bring up these private conversations. It's like they have no decency.
we pushed back and said, okay, let's see. I'm going to pull up a couple more, then we're going to get into this. Uh, let me just catch up here. One of Bill Kane's. Okay. So I'm going to get into Tommy Patera. Now, he's a very interesting guy because... When he was in when he was in school, he was bullied. He was picked on on the regular basis. He was beat up. Uh, he had a horrible young childhood. Um, he would come home beaten up all the time. Uh, so what he decided to do, he got to a certain age and he started to take martial arts. And the style that he was taking, Kiro Kashinkai, is basically it's a Japanese style. Now my first wife also took that same style. And to this day, her brothers still teach that style. And it's a Japanese style which doesn't believe in, like, wearing gear and, uh, you know, headgear and all that shit. They don't believe in that. It's a hard-hitting fighting style. And if you go watch uh, when they have their exhibitions and stuff, you can hear the fist banging on the bodies and stuff. Very tough style. And he excelled in it. Tommy Patera was so good in it that he got a scholarship to go and te and learn in Japan under the, the regular uh, master. And he did. Not only did he do that, when he was in the States, he won a lot of first place trophies in kata, in fighting, in weapons. And then when he went to Japan, he excelled in Japan with Japanese people that understand the style. He was winning first place trophies. He was literally, he literally became a master. Tommy Patera wasn't one of these guys that was like a fake martial arts guy because he watched shit on TV. He was really good at what he did. And people stopped picking on him. He hurt people that he came back and beat the shit out of the, all the people that picked on him in high school. And he got revenge on them. But on top of, but the problem with Tommy Patera, he was psychotic. He was a madman. And when he came back uh, from, from Japan, he started getting involved with the mob. And Anthony Spiro took him underneath his wing. And eventually, Anthony Spiro, uh, uh, he was made and he became part of uh, Lino's uh, group. And uh, Lino was his boss for a while. But eventually, Tommy Crotty had no bosses. And, you know, he had to answer just to, to Anthony Spiro. That whole Bath Avenue crew, those two guys were involved in it. And uh, uh, they, led to, they, they led Bath Avenue crew. I mean, and they were vicious guys. Spiro was a vicious guy, and so was Patera, and so was Lino. Okay. So uh, Tommy Patera grew up in the uh, uh, Gravesend part of Brooklyn. And the, the dojo he, he attended was in Sheepshead Bay. And uh, he rose to the top of the, uh, his class in the dojo right away. He had, a, he had a regular regime of working out. To this day, he still works out and he's in his 60s. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures so we have an idea of who the... Okay, he's in prison right now, right? And uh, just to give you an example, here's him right here. Now, he's in his 60s, and he's doing this, this stretch right here. If anybody thinks that stretch is easy, it is not. That tells me that the man's working out on a regular basis. Okay, so this is, uh, this is Eddie Lino going, walking around with Tom, Tommy Patero. Now, Eddie Lino was the head of, the fam uh, was the head of his crew. And uh, Tommy and Tommy Batero was underneath him. This is Tommy Batero with Billy Bright. Uh, the FBI tried to get Billy Bright to flip on Tommy Batero, but he was so scared of him that he knew better and he didn't. He wound up taking his time. This is him with Barbara Lambrosa. And uh, this guy is out right now. Manny Maya is his name. And this is him outside of Just Us Lounge. This is where the group hung out. And uh, actually, you can find him on Facebook and stuff. But he doesn't give any type of interviews or anything. And this is uh, Spiro. This is Anthony Spiro walking with uh, Tommy Patera. I mean, 
This is what they were very, very close to one another. Okay. So what we have is uh, Patera, though, he had this issue. He he loved to hurt people. He And they say that he killed many people, but he can only, he wound up getting convicted for four murders. Eventually, uh, they also put him on trial for, I'll talk about that in one second. I'm sorry. Let me just pull my stuff up, people. Okay, see, Batera's weakness was that when he killed people, he liked to keep their stuff. He would keep their souvenirs from the murder. He would keep jewelry. That's that's the actions of a serial killer. That he would literally keep stuff from them. And then his other problem was that he was disposing of the bodies in a, in one certain area in Staten Island. And uh, eventually what happened is this Jewish guy was busted, and he's, he he basically took them uh, to the area. When he first got to the area, he wasn't sure because he was only there once before. And so he took the FBI and stuff. They kept looking for the area, and they found it. <clears throat> and, Batera, and, and Batera thought these crazy things, like you could take a body and bury it under certain mud, and, 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 and it wouldn't have scent. Or you could bury it a certain distance underneath the ground, and it, he six to eight feet. But he didn't understand these dogs can detect it up to twenty feet below the surface. Some of these type of dogs. And so, not only that, then you had uh, Ganji. Let me let me show you this guy. This guy is pathetic. Uh, this guy is probably the worst snitch in the hit because Frank Ganji was his name. He came from a family of mobsters. His father was a captain. And this guy got pulled over for a DUI, and he started singing like a bird. He gave up. What he did is he uh, he basically, like I said, he called the detectives in, and he told them about Tommy Patera, and he told them about uh, all the people he was killing and stuff. Uh, and on top of that, he started talking for, uh, I'll give you an example, Tommy Batera was part of uh, when they killed let me Willie Boy Johnson. He was part of that hit crew. He was found innocent of that during the trial. But he was found guilty of the other murders. And even though they only got him on four murders, he was guilty. People said that he killed up to 60 people, maybe more. And all these bodies that he was burying, it was at the Wildlife Refugee, and it's out in... Uh, Staten Island. And so what they did is once they went out there, they started digging up the bodies and stuff. And then they started finding things like body parts. They started pulling these out of the ground and uh, they pulled out headless torsos. What Patera did when he killed these people, he would take their heads off and bury their heads separate from the body. I mean, this is like how sick this man was. I mean, it's not like he was uh, normal in any way. Let me, I'm going to pull any comments you guys have while I'm talking about this stuff. Yeah, Willie Boy was a rat. And what happened is Patera was part of the hit crew that killed him. They shot him 20, over 20 times. And uh, when they shot him, uh, he was dead before he hit the ground. You know, when he went to trial for it, he was found innocent. They couldn't get him on the Willie Boy Johnson murder, but they could get him on the other murders. And the fact of the matter, if Ganji didn't come come forward, they probably wouldn't have even uh, been able to get him on those murders. Uh, he was like the nail in the coffin. The first guy that took him, the Jewish guy that took them to the uh, the, the grave site where he was burying people. Uh, help them find the bodies and stuff, but it was still that they still had to prove it. And that's when guys started flipping, like always. But the fact of the matter was that this guy was a ruthless man. And, okay, let's go back. Let me discuss this. Okay, let me, I'm going to pull up some of your remarks here if you want to talk about it. Hey guys, let's talk about this. Get off that. Uh... 
Okay, guys. Okay, here's the thing, people. You, we talk about putting up content. And when we talk about putting up content, that's what I do. I put up content. And right now I'm seeing you guys in here talking about FBS and Angel. We already talked about Angel. So let's see. Okay, Grant, no surrender. We know that, Grant. I don't know how many times you're going to say it. Silvio, my brother. Uh, if I had to defend myself, I'd rather be Carol Kashinkai black belt over a judo master. Uh, Carol Kashinkai was, you got to remember, Carol Kashinkai is a style that is brutal. It's not a regular karate style. It's not, it, it's just karate style that goes for the kill. And it's a very, very brutal style. So I would have to agree with you there. Okay. So when the DA, when the DEA raided Batira's house, uh, they found a virtual library of death. They uh, He had all, a bunch of books on killing, dismemberment, war, and... Uh, and basically later they found seven bodies in the cemetery in Staten Island. And out of those seven bodies, though, they could only charge him with three of those bodies there. That's the only proof that they had with the three bodies. One of Patera's crew members, Frank Ganji, was, he was the nephew of Genovese Capo Rosario Ganji and decided to testify against Patera. Frank had been arrested for driving under the influence. That's it. Rested. Think about that, people. He he probably wasn't even looking at time at that murder. Eventually, he did 10 years. For, uh, Ganji did 10 years for four mur five murders. And when he did the 10 years, Patera even said to him, uh, he and he wrote to judge, and he says, uh, this guy was looking to get his 10-year sentence for five murders reduced. And the judge, giving him credit, refused to reduce it. This is Willie Boy Johnson when they shot him. And this is uh, a prison picture. It's basically a, picture, a prison picture. And in the prison picture, Patera with a bunch of other guys. I mean, uh, this is like an all-star picture of, uh, of who's in prison right there. Okay, people, I'm going to put up the invite if anybody wants to come in. I don't really care today if people come in, to be honest with you. It's Sunday. It's just a chilling day. There's NCAA uh, basketball on. Some really good games. I think Bill Jordan is Bofa. I doubt that very much. Westies. Angel Gotti's channel was was good at start talking about her father. Now, yes, it was very good when it started off. Very good channel. And now it's just like every show. Every show in the title. Uh, Kitchen Bitches, uh, Today They Pay. Ridiculous. You know, are we at the point here where that's what this is all about, people? You know, we, we get the bigger numbers and stuff when we come in here and we say horrible shit about people. Is that what it's about right now? Because that seems like to be where it's at. And you guys coming in have to decide if that's what you're about. What's that? I don't think... Still... Lee, what kind of sparring do they do in the style in style similar to UFC? Listen, every style is different. Every all these UFC places, they all have different styles. They got all different type of striking, striking or martial arts. But right now, boxing is a big part of striking when it comes to UFC fighting.
Colin Crotty is one fierce gangster. I think he, you know, he is fierce because, you know, he's doing his time. He's not in no special lockup like a lot of these guys get in prison. He writes letters to people that want to write him. Uh, a matter of fact, I read a letter once. Uh, I think um, Mob Talk Radio writes him on a regular basis. Um, so if anybody wants to contact him, he will answer you. I really, I understand too that, uh, I understand too that um, he answers them. He answers everybody. So people, it's not hard to find out where he is. Well, I know all the information where he is and to write him. And, you know, that's the, you're not going to get many of these guys that are still alive. Most of these guys are going to uh, pass away. They're getting in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. There are no real gangsters left uh, that are really healthy from the 70s and 80s. I mean, it's a dying breed now. So why not write these guys? Why not get as much, must, as much information as you can? The guys that are out and about right now are basically the ones that snitched. Those are the only guys around right now. You know, and those are the guys on YouTube are the snitches. You don't see any of the guys that didn't snitch on YouTube. Can you imagine what a show would be like with Tommy Patera if he had a show or, you know, and then these guys that do get out that didn't snitch, um, they won't even think about going on to YouTube. A lot of them go back into the mob. Whether, you know, sure, the mob's not like what it used to be. But a lot of them still go back into the mob. Gianni Russo, Lee doing no real content, take notes, kids. Okay, well, you know something? This week I did a show on, let's see this people that we've done shows on. Uh, all you got to do is look at my thumbnails and you would see that I did three real shows this week with some bitching in between. But at least we're trying to put out content here. This is what all the guys here should do, content. I mean, you'll go on shows now. All you'll see is bickering, fighting, and bullshit. That's all you'll see. Big L, trust me, Judo, you spike someone in the head on the concrete. There are no more fights. Yes, Judo's... It, Ronda Rousey was a Judo expert and was in the Olympics for Judo. But the reality is when Ronda Rousey fought a different style of fighting, but Amanda, when she fought Amanda, Amanda Nunez, she got destroyed. When she fought uh, Holly Holmes, she got destroyed because of striking. Judo is great, but striking does not, judo does not beat a style like Carol Kashinkai. It just doesn't beat it. You might, because you, if you're in judo, you still, you got to get a hold of the person. If they're punching you in the face, how are you going to get a hold of them? Lee, take it Xanax and relax. A chat comes here to watch you do real content, but also to socialize, chat about what's up. If you don't like the comments, read them before you put them up. Listen, Johnny. I don't know who you are. I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even remember seeing you in here, but thank you for the advice. What's up, bud? Where are you eating pizza? So you call, you put up comments. People having uh, combos on here all the time. And have no, oh, this guy, Johnny's still talking shit. I don't see your face, New York Connect, uh, Joe. So I don't know if that's you, Joe. Text me if it's you, Joe, before I bring you in. Okay. I'm just not at home right now. Oh, you're 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 in the chat right now, though, right? Yeah, that's me. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that someone wasn't yeah, I know. Like you. No, it's not. Nope. Genji suffered from PTSD because of what he seen. It screwed him up. Don Vito, all these gangsters seen stuff. I mean, does that mean that he should rat out uh, Tommy Patera? 
So, Joe, what's your opinion on uh, Tommy Patera? You're from that neck of the show. Huh? Am I on your show? Yes, you are. Where the fuck am I? Oh, okay, I see my ugly face. Okay. What's my Watch the cursing. Get the shit out Sorry. of your mouth. What was what? Tommy what Patera? Of, what do you think of Tommy Patera as a gangster? Tommy Patera as a gangster was um, a real gangster. You know what I mean? Like, he was, he was into all of that. Like, you know, but... I think he had a little bit of a serial killer in him because, you know, when people start keeping like, you know, earrings and shit like that of their victim and stuff like that, it kind of like borderlines on something different. You know what I mean? And that's what he Normally, did. He was keep, right. You're exactly right. He was keeping he was keeping stuff that uh, like as a I never heard, I, I, you didn't hear of other guys doing that. I mean, which pretty much made him. Somewhat of a serial killer. But, you know, I found it interesting that this guy got picked on when he was in school and he went and took martial arts and he basically used it to not get picked on anymore. Yeah, man, because you know what? Brooklyn back then was really, really tough, that area. So, well, you know, for him to up? get. Yeah, you know, you grew up in Brooklyn, so you know the deal. I was in Sheepshead Bay. Uh same thing. Bay was a lot it was a lot better than say Bath Avenue. Bath Avenue was much rougher than Sheepshead Bay. Oh yeah. I mean, now didn't you live in Bath Avenue when you were there? I didn't live on Bath Avenue. I lived off of Bath Avenue. Bay 8th and Bath Avenue run into each other. So I was on Bay 8th between 86th and Benson and then Benson and Bath. But I lived on Bay 7th. I lived in multiple places. I lived in other areas of Brooklyn too. But um that area was pretty tough. So what saved me was my, you know, saved me from a lot of trouble was someone my neighbor across the street. This guy Jerry who was actually Gas Pipe's nephew. So when you have someone like that looking out for you, it makes your life a little bit easier. Now, where would you put Gas Pipe compared to, say, Tommy Patera? Gas Pipe is a completely different level in the sense of Tommy Patera earned money, but Gas Pipe was actually um, like he made it to boss, basically. And he was, right. a, I mean, he was, Gas Pipe was like probably, um, a look at the people he was killing, like he, the shit he was doing, blowing people up and stuff like that. I think Tommy Patera was just more like a maniac serial killer. So was Gas Pipe, but he was probably the most dangerous mobster in our area. His so nephew, you- a friend of mine, his nephew's name was Mikey Del Duca, and uh, his nephew was killed. It was fucked up. There was like a family dispute, like his own cousin killed him. Well, guess what? The kid that killed him, I don't think he lasted 10 days. He was dead already in 10 days. So if you F with gas pipe, it was over. Now, Tommy Patera, on the other hand, Johnny A. Light told him, I'm going to kill you when I see you. You effed up. You think you could have did that to gas pipe? No. Well, Johnny A. Light says he did that. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I mean, I know that, I'm being, I'm being you know, spiteful. I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, he said he did that, a lot. To Tommy Patera, you wouldn't have made it to your car. <laughs> yeah, Tommy Patera. I don't. I can't picture him saying that to either one of them. To be honest, with you. <laughs> I mean, no. talk is cheap. That would be like saying that shit to John Gotti, or there's just certain people you couldn't say that stuff to. And, if they uh, were both walking to his car, like he said it, and. He said that to Tommy Patera before his hand hit his door handle to open it, A-Light, he would have been dead. And I hear Tommy Patera used to mess around with guys like kicking shit off their shoulders and taking his foot and putting it within two inches of their face. Uh, Just and he was very intimidating that way. And he was very... um, he just really didn't give a fuck too much. I mean, he just, he, excuse my language, he didn't really care, you know, like who you were. I mean, he was basically, uh, 
he wasn't boss material, but he was someone you didn't want to play with. But he was very close to Anthony Spiro. Would you- oh, yeah. Yeah, he was very close to Spiro. Yeah, actually, who got him started was uh, the kid Bruno. That's who brought him in. And he actually was close to being killed in that whole thing. If he would have went to that meeting with them instead of – they would have killed him or tried to kill him because he was, was a threat. And Lino was his boss, right? That's the crew. I'm not going to say uh, – oh, f- yeah, Frankie Lino, yep. Right. Yeah, but Eddie Lino had a relationship with him too. Right. And you know, that was amazing. more of um, you, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing the, the 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 gangsters that came out of that Bath Avenue area. Oh, forget I it. Mean, when you think about it, I mean, it's incredible. It's like, it, it, yeah, it really so is. Came, so many came from that area. And it seems like the ones that came from Bath Avenue were more vicious than the others. Well, one big misconception when you're dealing with people of um, that really are not from that area, you know, everything's about like, oh, he's a made guy, he's this. In that area, yeah, there was a ton of guys that were made, but there also was a, we also, um, there was also a lot of guys that weren't made that were um, very, very capable and very respectable. So, like the like the Paulie G's and stuff. Paulie G's, a lot of guys, a lot of guys. You know, they didn't. A lot of tough guys never got made. So, everybody thinks you have to be a made guy to get respect. It really wasn't like that. So, and the, all these kids in the Bath Avenue, they all wanted to become gangsters, no matter what type of family they came from. Right. I mean, that's what they seen all the time. I mean, you got Sammy Gavano. You can go on and on. Yeah, Rob Jean. Actually, I talked to that kid, Rob Jean. He's from my neighborhood, too. He seems like a really good guy, man. I didn't know him, but I guess he's related to Eddie Lino or something like that. He could tell you a lot about him. But there's no way that um, A-Light said that to Patera. So let me ask you something. Let me ask you a question. You're about that age where you could have you could have gotten involved with these guys. Why didn't you get involved with these guys, Joe? And you know I moved when, away. Okay. I moved away. I mean, would do you think that you would have gotten involved with them if you didn't move away? Uh possibly. I played sports. That was another thing. And when you play sports, guys want you to play sports. Like I had older guys telling me, stick with basketball, stick with basketball. So, um, but one of my close friends, he went by the name of Tigger and, uh, he got wrapped up with those guys. So it would have been pretty easy for me to get involved. I mean, we lived across the street from each other. We grew up with one another. So yeah. Yeah. But just because of that, it's 50 50, but you never know what, you know, I don't know. I don't know what would happen if I stayed by the time I came back, I came back in 99. So I was gone for like seven years and that seven year period, everything fucking changed. Use my language again. Everything changed. So thank God for that because I would not want to, you know, I just wouldn't want to, it's just nothing that it didn't really appeal to me that much. Because a lot of people get killed when you see your friends getting killed and, you know, I mean, growing up in that area, you just see a lot. You know, no matter how you feel about Jimmy Calandra, when he talks about like these young guys just getting shot and killed, like it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was happening everywhere. I mean, in that area. I mean, these guys were just killing each other on a regular basis. That's why you're not going to, you know, a lot of people, you know, think I'm going to talk bad about Jimmy. I'm not going to talk bad about him because he actually was around those guys and he's like 10 years older than me. So I really didn't, didn't know him, but you know of those guys. And, and truthfully, he, he was with those guys, regardless of what he was doing, he was still with those guys and they were pretty dangerous. So now him cooperating and doing that whole thing, I don't know anything about it, but 
you know, you want to talk about being in the streets and being involved. He was definitely involved. You know, he went to the can. He did he did years in the can. I mean, he didn't talk till after, you know, but but I think he did a good three to five years or something like that. And anybody, uh, that, says, anybody that says he wasn't involved, they're just talking out their ass. There's no doubt right. that he was involved. I mean, no, like they say he was a fuck, you know, they say he was a um coffee boy or he didn't know Spiro and this and that. I mean, Spiro wasn't the type of guy that really was going to talk to a lot of people anyway about business. So I don't know what their relationship was, but. You're no smart gangster, especially when you're the boss of that area, is going to talk to lower level guys. Yeah. See, the thing is, my paternal side of my family is from Bay 14. So um, that's where Spiro and Calco are from. My family lived there from 1920 to 2010. So Spiro was a. Uh, um, and his brother Sally, they grew up with my grandfather Joe. They were into birds and stuff like that. It wasn't like my my grandfather worked, so it wasn't like he went up to Spiro and said, "Hey, how's the numbers business this week?" Or you know, is the are we up? He just wasn't like that, Spiro. That's how we managed to stay out of jail. He was like the opposite of these guys that you know are constantly talking. But but he killed people. He had people killed, and that was a bad move. Okay, Jack Jones says, uh, how you, uh, without breaking the truth, Lee announced his show would be on FBS1 on any way, broken truce. Not really. You know why? Because we have no truce saying that who can go on at the same time. If you put up a good video, it's going to be watched during the day. Uh, how many people you have in your live isn't going to determine. Right now, we have almost 100 people here. And if he's on right now, I still got 100 people here. I'm sure he does, too. So, you know, uh, I'm not so going to really. Huh? Do you know Rob Jean? No. Yeah, I talked to him one time. He's from oh. the hood. He, know, he knows his shit. He's a, he would be a good guy to talk to. I don't know if he would come on, but he knows a lot of shit. He knows all the guys. He seems like he's a very, I don't want to say it. I call everyone a stand-up guy. I got to get levels to stand-up guys. You know what I mean? Like level one, level two, level three. But he's, you know, he knows his stuff. And he actually knows my friend Tigger. So. Well, where's your friend Tigger now? I really don't, can't say that, but I, he's in. I believe he's in Florida now. I haven't talked to oh, him in a while. So, so he made it. So he. So he made it out. Room, he's okay now. The rumor is that he flipped. The rumor. Oh. I don't know how true that is, but um, he was with uh, Jim Galeone and those guys. He was in that crew. Uh, Joey Electric. Um, uh, to be fair to Jimmy Calandra, he does have credibility, as he can prove. There's no doubt about that. He was in prison with some of the bosses. He has plenty of pictures to prove it. You know, Joey Electric, you're right. And he does have 22,000 people watch, you know, uh, subscribers. You know, I don't care for Jimmy Calandra. He doesn't care for me. But to be fair, I'm not going to say that he wasn't around guys on Bath Avenue because he was. Uh, right. You know, that's what it comes down to. He's just not a likable guy. And some people say I'm not a likable guy. So what the hell? Okay, Tigger. A like, lot of people. Tigger, like Winnie, Winnie the Pooh? Is that the Tigger you're talking about? His name is Tony. Oh, Tony. Okay. <laughs> so it was like we used to break his balls and call him Tony. Like Tony the Tiger, you know, Frosted Flakes. They're great. So we just started calling him. Actually, my friend Vinny gave him the name. I was there when he gave him the name. And that was a name just amongst friends when he was eight years old. And I guess it stuck. No, not Trigger, Tigger. Like T-I-G-G-E-R. Right. Or Tig, we called him. Really good kid. His dad was a great guy too, man. Yeah, his dad was really cool, man. His name was Tony, too. He passed away probably like about eight, ten years ago. And I where seen him at? right before he died. Where are, you at? where are you at right now, Joe? I'm at my uncle's. I was actually on my way home. I told you I had relatives in town this weekend. Right. 
We had a one. Well, my cousin has a um one year uh, birthday party. We went to Jersey yesterday, so my relatives there. I'm actually heading home in a little bit, but they're um. They were actually leaving in a little bit, but I wanted to come on because I didn't think I'd make it home in time. So I said, but let I'm me jump on for a minute. Yeah, I'm glad you did. So you can hang out maybe 15, 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to watch some, I'm gonna watch some NCAA basketball today. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, have a, did you watch any of the fights yesterday? Yes, I did. I watched the main event. And uh, they, I, what would you think of them? It was a snoozer. Yeah, it was definitely a snoozer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. those two guys are killers. I wanted to, yeah, you figured they were going to be hitting each other. Oh, wait, FBS is on now talking about, hey, if he wants to talk about me, if that's what he needs for his show, let him do it. You know? Yeah, he's be the thing is this, he's becoming unglued. Yeah, he's becoming unglued. It's the only thing he has. I mean, if that's what he wants to do is drama and talking about other channels, God bless him. Uh, I only wish him the best. Yeah, I mean, look, it is what it is. I mean, these guys, they they think, oh, one other, you know what? I shouldn't even bring it up. Hold on one second. I got to just hold on. Okay. Uh, maybe he needs to get his head off his chest. And get, okay. Calder Patty is going to have a great career. Oh, uh, Patty, I don't know. Patty gets hit a lot, uh, Danny. He gets hit a lot. He got rocked in that last fight by a so-so fighter. Who? So, Patty who? That guy, uh, Patty from uh, Ireland. Uh, I don't know. You know, he, We'll see. There's one guy know, from Ireland, uh, Conor McGregor. What's up with him? He made lots of money. It's hard, it's hard to be hungry when you have millions of dollars in the bank. <laughs> it's hard to be hungry when you wake up and sat in the streets. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, but listen, you th I'm always hungry. If I was a billionaire, I'd be hungry. So that doesn't work all the time. Yeah, but this, you, you yeah. know who this jester is? No, and, uh, what's he saying? Well, you just finish your story, and then I'll tell you. No, you tell me jester. So I guess he's got this beef with NB. Right. And I watched one of his videos about it. It was atrocious. He's going to slap her. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. But it's all talk. And I'm like, no one's going no one's going to do nothing to nobody. It's all talk. Anybody that talks on here, it's all talk. MB Yeah, no, I know it's all talk, yeah. but even talking like that. I mean, who talks like that about women? You know, I mean, obviously like women. Obviously, I like made some statements that got back to me. I mean, I, you know, whether he did it or anyone did it doesn't make it right. But NB is a completely different situation with me. You know what I mean? And I wish he, I mean, he claims to be someone that respects me. Well, maybe you shouldn't have jumped out the window so fast. I mean, women are women. They talk shit. They do things. It doesn't, it really doesn't bother me. I mean, it just doesn't bother me. They got a channel. You know, we have a channel, uh, uh, NB for the unemployed Joe, Vinny, and Lee Mole. I don't know why they have Vinny's name on it, because he's probably friends with him. But <laughs> that really doesn't even bother me that much. It just doesn't even bother me that much. I don't know. But coming from a girl, I would laugh it off from a woman. You know, like, I don't know. I just... The slapping of the women, and then like, what do you expect me to do now? Say, oh, it's cool. Or hey, he'll Don call Vito. me. And wait, wait, wait. Let me read this. Don Vito, mm -hmm. Lee, you have ninety-three people watching now. FBS has twenty two hundred twenty. Of course, because he's right. attacking people. Do you understand that? I'm not going to do that because I have shit lined up. I can easily start attacking him right now. I could start attacking Angel right now and get my numbers up, but I refuse to do that. So let him well, do the other thing is do. the other thing is there's 93 people in here. So that fits my whole, you know, I say on YouTube, most of the people are scumbags. Excuse my language. Well, we know that out of the 222 people, 
a hundred, there's 190 of them that are scumbags. Because 30 of them that are listening are probably just no, listening. Oh, that's you're wrong, dude. Come on. Yeah, just, I'm not wrong. Got, Trust you got, me. You got you got good people here, and then you got people that are here strictly for the drama. And that's what no, you, there's have, in yeah. this chat, there's good people. In this chat, well, not, there's good I'm people. Not, in that listen, chat, I'm gonna, no, because you can't support what he did. Yeah, you can't support well, listen, what he did. He threatened listen. Josie, called the cops. Forget I said. Yeah. Jimmy Calandra is the man. I got people sending me messages. This guy is on the air with someone talking about people getting indicted. He's a cop caller and people are kissing his ass like he's fucking John Gotti. Like, seriously? The but minute you know he what? said those things, Listen, he, said he was sending people well, after Joe. Let me explain Joe, 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 hold on one second. Let me explain something to you. We come on here to build our channels and to get breaks. Okay. I got some breaks because I'm trying to stay away from the bullshit. So right. if, if they're going to bullshit and if that's what you want your show based on, just do it. You know, mm -hmm. that's all FBS has is bullshit and attacking people. He has nothing else, nothing. So let him do he has it. Three friends. Yeah, but it doesn't, but that's why people, when people tune in and that's what they're watching you for, that means you're, is that what people are watching OC shorts for? Is that what people Absolutely watching Black not. Man Mafia? They're not watching them for that shit. That's all the dude has is attacking. So right now, so I don't know whether he's attacking me. People are saying he is. But if he is, he's doing it purposely to keep his numbers up. When you attack, you keep your fucking numbers up. But his numbers aren't going up, though. No, they're not That's going up. So he's got to change his whole game plan. They're not going up and he's not getting any breaks. And, you know, that's what it comes down to. I'm doing something in two weeks that he wishes he could be doing. But he can't. Not People look at his look at what's going on there and they don't want no part of it. And that, you know, and that after what happened to me with Russo, you know, I have to consider what I'm doing, too. People pull up your shit. They see what you're doing. They see you're attacking people, and that's all you're doing. It's literally, we're at the point where we got shows here. All they're doing is attacking people. That's it. That's the only thing they got. They got nothing else. Yep. And well, you know, I got people attacking my wife right now, right? <laughs> And listen, man, if you think you could get her, take her off my hands, please. Would you do that? <laughs> yeah. I well, need to be at home. How do you know she's not with me, you schmuck? <laughs> He's a twit. Let me wait a minute. Let me tell her to put on a tank top and I'll bring her on and we can show you her tattoo on her shoulder. You want <laughs> me to do that? Would that make you happy? <laughs> be at home with your wife. How would you know what are you trying to what are you trying to say? What? That, what, what am I trying doing? to say? That people. The thing is, how do you know when I do shows? Ninety-nine percent of the time, they're at my house, and my wife is next to me, but I just don't have her on screen. So, should, do I have to put her on screen? <laughs> well, you know, it's something like these people run their fucking mouth. They have no clue what they're Here's talking what, about. But to me, that's funny, yeah, really. If it wasn't for drama, do you think anybody would be? Answer this question honestly. Do you think anybody would watch Tony if it wasn't for drama? No. What would he talk about? No. At least I make have... an attempt. You know, I'm not a gangster, but at least I make an attempt. I read and I'm learning every day about these guys. If these I guys, think... if, if these other guys don't want to do that shit, they're not capable. Check this out. I heard a guy last night say, I'm the only one around here that has a fucking felony. Dude, I'm on the front page of a fucking newspaper being arrested. So but the that's, guy's not, lying that's nothing to mouth. brag about, though, Lee. You should know no, that. No, let me finish. What This is what the guy's saying. I'm the only felon here. Nobody else is a felon. You know, I wish Vinny's that was a the felon. case. Huh? Vinny's a felon. He spent 10 days in jail. 10 fucking days, man. What did he do in those 10 days? He probably hung out with the brothers. <laughs> See, one yeah. thing you got to realize about black people, right? When people say that I'm black, no. 
It's not that I'm black. It's black people want to be Italian. Everything that we do as Italians gets the gold chains. The, the, who do you think started that shit? Every rapper in America's last name is Gotti or fuck, it's just Scarfo. Or the, it's, it's amazing. But I'm acting black. Maybe black people act like me. It doesn't really matter. Joe, you are who you are, man. That's what you're known for. You're known as I'm a wigger. You don't know. You're known as the you're known as the old guy that dresses up like a twelve year old. Yeah, I'm a fifty eight year old wigger. Yeah, I mean, God bless you. Yeah. One guy said, <laughs> one guy said that nasty message to me. He says, "You're fat, you're bald, and you walk like a and you look like a sixty year old." I said, "Really? Wow, women must really like that look." Then. <laughs> so, what do you think about this woman Tommy Patera killed for? Uh, Giving his old lady drugs. You know what? I mean, it's, I don't know. If something happened to my wife, would I kill a woman? Man, I can't tell you how I would react. You know, I, I wouldn't. What he did cutting off her head, I heard all this stuff. I mean, I don't know. But, um, hey, let me put this fuckwad up. Kevin Myers. Uh, humans suck by thank you for humans who saved my dogs. What the fuck, bro? God damn. Kevin, who the fuck are you, dude? I haven't seen you before. He's gun smoke. Huh? He's gun smoke. Gun smoke. Who the fuck would want to be gun smoke? Well, no, gun smoke is Kevin Myers. How do you know that? Well, he has three friends, so you got to pick. It's either who could it be? It's either Angel Gotti, Jimmy Calandra, or gun smoke. He ran every other of his friends off. He ran off Dom. He ran off Gay Paris. Who else? Does They're Dom all gone. Even, does Dom even have a show anymore? He must have really did Dom. Must have treated him real good with his 200 subs. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good can him. He's quite a character. It wasn't uh, for Adam 22. Nobody would know who he is. Okay. Well. Okay, so so Joe, when, when's your next show? When are you planning on doing your next show? Tonight. What I really wanted to do is a show every other day. Because, you know, I don't want people... The thing is, I look at it this way. So as content creators, I'm cool with a bunch of them. If I'm going on every day four hours, well, how do they get a chance to go on? You know, we got to kind of work with each other a little bit. You know what I mean? But I don't want to... For a new show, you're getting good numbers. I mean, you're you're breaking a thousand on every video you do. Thank you. And and, and that that says a lot. That means people are watching you, Joe. And that's how you got to yep. look at it, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you're I owe it. To yes, he built my channel. He built my channel. The shape doesn't. Uh, who built your channel? The FBS. He built my channel too. Where the fuck would I be without him? <laughs> Granted. He was on my show first, but he still built my channel. I got to give the man credit. Okay. Everybody on here, everybody, OC Shorts, Sammy Gavano, everybody got their channel built because he helped them. That's what it yeah. comes down to, people. Doesn't oh, make it right, but Tom, Tommy, let me, Tommy warned her three or four times to stay away from his wife. Yes, he did. And it got her head cut off. I mean, yeah, unfucking believable. <laughs> Tommy Patera, man. What a fucking mad man. <laughs> yeah. So you know why I say it was gun smoke is because he's got three friends. One of them is Angel, one is Jimmy, and one is gun smoke. Now, Angel and Jimmy, I don't think that they come on shows and like come on as fake names and stuff like that. I just see them as having a little more I don't know what the word is. Maybe their life is a little too busy for that, but that gun smoke has no life. He just goes to work and eats McDonald's. So he's got hey, a lot Adam, of free time. Adam, there. I know you're talking about with Big Herc. Uh, I've seen his shows. Uh, I think you yeah, might I know Big Herc. There. Yeah, he, Wes Watson's good too. Yeah, I, uh, I like Wes Watson. Okay, let's see. Exactly, he wants to get paid for for reading comments. Unbelievable. Listen, I don't. I can say something proudly. I don't come on in here and ask for money. When people help me with Polly, 
they helped me because they wanted to do it. You know, that's what yeah. it comes down to. We can all use money. We can all be on here begging for money. But that's what separates men from not men. Can you put up Stu Kadasso's comment? Huh? Drug fuel, drug fueled four hour rants equal NY Connect. <laughs> Brother man, wait a second. Do you think I'm bar I'm embarrassed that I've done drugs or do drugs? <laughs> I don't <laughs> you're coming at me on that. <laughs> okay, Joe, let me okay, Everybody Joe, let me I know who does drugs. So let me give you a little interview here. Do you do drugs yeah. right now? Yes. You do. What kind of drugs yeah. do you do? I take pills, I crush them up, and I sniff them. <laughs> <laughs> what now, kind? What here's kind how do? much. Wait a minute. So wouldn't you think that if I was doing drugs, you should ask the people that hang out with me on a regular basis? Like, for example, if I went to Tom's house, they drink, they smoke, cigars, they're doing this. I don't touch any of that stuff. I'm probably the last person that does drugs. But if you guys think I'm doing drugs, well, hey, have at it. Then it sounds good. Well, listen, but that is Joe, completely Joe, not the case. I'm, I'm accused of being a pill popper. You know what it is? When people are drug addicts and they need and, they, and, and they're low lives, what they do is they usually accuse people who are not drug addicts of being right. drug addicts. Right. Oh, just so people know, I want to make uh, when I do when I go to my show, uh, and I debate Ramundi right before the show, I'm going to do a drug test people. Nice. Yeah. Just so you know, it's all planned, but I'm letting you in on this information. Now I will be peeing into a contain container and it's going to, nowadays you could, you can get these tests and you can tell right away whether people's on drugs. Right. So if I'm such a strong out pill popper, I should have, there's no way I can go three, four days without and get the shit out of my body. Yeah. So during this show, a lot of things are going to be proven to a lot of people. Okay. I will deal with Ramundi first, but I can tell people this right now. If Anthony Ramundi calls me a pedophile when I'm in front of him, the Los Angeles police are going to be coming to the studio. Well, he'll shoot you 14 times in the head, so you got to be careful. Yeah, so I, I, but I can promise you that, people, right now, if that man has enough balls, which I know he doesn't, to my face, call me a pedo. Right. That's when you take it to a whole different level. Right. And, and uh, one of the thing, I just want to say this. Yes, I do pills. How often do I do pills? As much as I could get them, okay? <laughs> and if someone... If someone says, hey, man, I got a couple of these, you want them? I'll take them, definitely. But see, the difference is this. I could tell you I smoke crack. I could tell you all these things. But guess what? I don't have parents <laughs> that, <laughs> like, who? nobody's going to, like, if I said I smoke crack, and half of the people in the chat are probably doing Pills, everybody does something. Drink. I mean, what's the difference if people get drunk or pop pills? I mean, I don't look down on people for that. <laughs> DP, that's that. funny. DP says, Lee calls, is it going to be pre recorded or live interview? It's going to be live. They're going to follow me into the bathroom and stand over my shoulder and they're going to film as I piss into the bottle. We already yep. got it planned out, people. And if you want to see his pecker, if you want to see his pecker when he's pissing, you're going to need a telescope because yep. I don't even think I gotta, you can see it. I got a shed above my pecker. I got to lift the shed, too. <laughs> Thank you, the <laughs> truth. <laughs> you know, not everybody's like you, Joe. Uh, you know, you know how expensive yeah. pills are right now? How much? You know how much it, you know, it, the price of them? I wouldn't have one article of clothing. I wouldn't have one chain. I All my sneakers would be gone. Pills have went up so much in the last couple of years. Oh, my God. Anybody Open that a buys a pill off the street now has to be insane because they're, what they're doing is they're pressing fentanyl into these I would never pills. do that. I would never do million, that, bro. I would never take a pill are, off the street. People are overdosing on fentanyl. One pill. I would never take street. it off the street. You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy. crazy. Right now. Yep. Absolutely I promised crazy. my wife. I said I would never do that to her. So what do you do? You go to the doctor. You got to come from a doctor. 
Blues so are like excuse, 40 bucks now. So what excuse do you give the doctors when you want to get some pills? Well, no, I have I have excuses. I mean, I have plenty. I almost lost my foot. Did you find it? I, my foot got infected. And I got lucky, but it's hard to get pills now on Staten Island because there's a big epidemic there. It's um, doctors don't want to give them. You could get them on the street easy, but like you said, I mean, I have a lot of friends that started, you know, popping pills here and there. Next thing you know, they're sniffing 20 blues a day, seriously. And then it's like the blues went up. You got to have like, like I said, they're 30, 40 bucks now. When I used to, back in the day when I was getting them, I was paying like $10, $12. I mean, now 40 bucks for the same thing. And if you know anything about pills, after a while, you need more and more and more and more. So let me ask you a question, Joe. Have you ever actually found yourself addicted to, to pills or any type of drugs? I thought I was addicted to pot. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was addicted to weed. And when I stopped, nothing happened. So, like, I literally, you know what's been the toughest thing for me to do? Tougher than any drug. Sugar. Getting off sugar. Oh, you're yeah. not joking. No, nothing, I'm telling you, man. What's no, it, the, it messes carbs. with you, man. It was making my body feel, it was like making me feel effed up. What's worse than no, carbs? See, I'm not an expert at low-level drugs. I mean, yeah. Listen, when I was five, six years old, my mom and my stepdad would have drugs on the table, like a lot of coke. You know what I mean? And they would it would be like in a brick form. They had these grinders, and they would put it in this grinder and then, like, sniff the coke, and I'd be sitting there with them. And they'd be like, oh, it's like sugar. You put it on your cereal. When you get older, you'll like it. And uh, weed, as a matter of fact, they used to leave the Coke on like a, a little mirror. I would go up to it and like, I think I saw it like on a Scarface or something. And like I would lick my finger, dip it in the thing, and then lick it again. It was like bad, like a 9-volt battery it tasted to me. And for some reason, I never really just got into drugs because, you know, I seen – Pills. I seen the, my stepdad with the Xanax doing 20, 30 sticks of pop. I mean, so I, these guys think it's low level. Forget about it. You know, I lived in Vegas. We used to go to Mexico. You could get them over the counter. Now, getting them back would be a little different. But, you know, I know more about drugs than any of these people. I've been around it my whole life. They used to, my uncles used to come over in the 80s, free basing and, oh, you got to go to bed. Yeah, kid's going to go to bed, <laughs> really. I'd be looking under the door. I had tape. It was forget about it. It was, I seen so much shit with drugs. So many people die. So many people get killed over drugs. I promised my wife. I said, I would never, ever get a drug off the street because I know people that have taken pills. Like you said, this, fuck, this fentanyl and they're just dead, man. You know, and then they get, you go from pills to heroin. You go from pills to heroin. If I was really on drugs and I had a, a pill addiction, People don't know what addiction really is. You know what addiction is? You look like FBS. That's what you look like. You have nothing. You wear fake polo. You wouldn't be able to. I'm a working man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously. Like if anybody, you guys joke about drugs, but do you really know what a drug addict looks like? What his teeth look like? What, what his family like looks like? Because I do a four hour show and I'm shaking back and forth. You think that's a drug addict? I mean, you guys sound stupid with that because anybody who does drugs or has done drugs knows that I don't have the look of a drug addict. Believe me, not even close. Do you not think I have? A, wait, wait, Joe, Joe, do you think I look like a drug addict? No, you look like a, a vagabond. <laughs> That's what I get laugh at when when people call me. Oh, he pops pills and all that shit. It it, it, it blows my mind that. People believe this, especially some of the retards that are in their chat rooms that believe this shit. Right. I mean, that's what really gets me. Uh, you can have pixelite, uh, pixelite in the groin and then dip drug test papers strip for the test. What the fuck are you yeah. talking about, dude? I don't even know what you're talking about. What am I going to fucking have something on my... Oh, my God. The fuck? That's such a I heard if you, stick, if you take a... This is Cougine. 
Did you used to do this when you're 13 years sober? Bro, you're a fucking idiot with 13 years sober. You, you 13. <laughs> Listen, did you used to take a pill and stick it up your ass? What happens when you do that? I hear that could be deadly because it gets into your bloodstream real fast. But obviously you're still here, so you must have fucking put it on someone's dick and licked it off instead of your asshole. Sorry about that. You know, hey, we used to do that with chicks. Stop swearing. My numbers will go up. Pharmaceuticals are ridiculously expensive. Well, you're all about numbers, Lisa. So. No, yeah, right? If that I was, was about a... num- it, listen, Joe, if I was about numbers, I'd be in here doing drama shows all the time. I'm willing yeah. to be down four or 500 views a video and not attack. I'll be totally right. honest with you. I'll be totally right. honest with you. It's the easiest thing to do, and it's the cowardly way. If you got to do a show just on attacking people, that means you got no yeah. content and you're a fucking retard. That's what it comes down to. What's up with the bad golfer? He's a real piece of you know what. I would love to curse him out, but I don't want to curse. He's an awful human being, bad golfer. Awful human being. Do you know that after my brother died, he used to go. I did interviews uh, with some of these wrestling magazines and stuff. He would go in there and start insulting me and saying that uh, I stole money from my brother. Bad golfer is the worst piece of shit going on the face of the earth out of everybody in here. Bad golfers yeah. right there as the ultimate yeah. scumbag. So is Boston Red. Yeah. Anybody that hangs out in that chat room over there, they're really fucking twisted, demented fox. Is what they you are. know who Joey Dimes is? Oh, my gosh. Another fucking gut clown. I don't even listen. I know Dimes. We've talked before. And he has a channel about me. I think I don't even... I don't even dislike him. He's the one guy out of all of them I don't dislike. I mean it. For some reason, he was cool with me for a little bit. Then I started dissing his fat homie. And uh, who's, who's his fat homie? You know, Mr. Uh, FB, whatever his name is. FB, FB. I can't. You know, Mr. It. Monday. He he calls me Monday, and we're on a FaceTime chat. And he didn't wave the white flag. He just had a white hat on. White glasses, a white T-shirt, fake polo. <laughs> he had everything white, but he wasn't waving the white flag. Tuesday. Tuesday was we got to stop. I have all the text messages. Tuesday, we got to stop this. It's going to head in a bad direction. I said, bro, it's not heading in a bad direction for me. It might be for you. Wednesday, he pulled the Angel Gotti card. Thursday, I'm going to kill you. Friday. Wait, what did he do Friday. Uh, he wanted to kill me on one day. Then the next day he hated me. Or well, one of them. He hated me one day and then he wanted to kill me. And yesterday I put Saturday to be determined. So I don't know what he said about me yesterday. But that's some classic. Um, if you went to a psychologist, I forget. Like the way he did it was you try to be like nice. That doesn't work. Then you try to pull the friend card. That doesn't work. You know, like, oh, Angel Gotti thinks you're scared. I said, oh, well, I better get, I better call up Angel Gotti and tell her I'm not scared. I said, I'll go on Angel Gotti's show, just not without, just, I won't go on with you. He doesn't get that. He thinks I want to have a debate with him. Debate about what? There's no debating. Then he wants to kill me. Then he hates me. And someday, today, he'll call me and say, this has to end. What has to end? What? Everything he said about me is true. Everything these hey. guys say is true. I sniff pills and I don't know, man. I, I just. Hey, the truth says I should host the swag showdown where Joey sneakers, hoodie, lefty guns, and both for square off in a swag battle. Whatever the hell that means. Well, his swag is like fake stuff. Yeah, I have a lot of fake stuff. You're right. It's polo assin. Yeah, but now I look, really now look. These this guys, guy never showed, guys. You know, look. These these are the losers that are coming from over there. You look like a junkie bay eighth and got thirteen years clean. I do know what addiction is. No, you don't. You too. You're a clown. You're a fucking clown. <laughs> no, he's the cousine. <laughs> if you were a cousine, you'd like me, but you don't know nothing about being a cousine. You're a schmuck. You don't even know what a cousine is. You must have saw a, mo- a movie and they said Cougine in it. You're like, oh, that's me. Jimmy Clander called MRE evil, yet him and his friends used to kill people. You know what, Max? You hit it right in the fucking button. I can't even touch that one. 
You said it all what you had to say. That's you, you can't even better. Lee drug is shook. Oh, let, that is Tony V. You're not fucking joking. You know, it's uh it there's nothing more deadlier than carbs. You know. Hey, what's up, Josie? What's up, Mike? What's up, big Mike? Josie is, let me tell you, I love Josie. Lee, you want me to hook you up? We'll go out on a double date. If you could hook me up with your daughter, we'll go out, me, you, Josie, and your daughter. What do you think? Josie's too, Josie's too classy for me. You kidding me? All right, BK Shallon, you get on board then. Okay, She's a classy woman. She's just too classy for me. Okay. Uh, bad golfer is lurking in the chats today. Everyone, be careful. He might pee on you. Yeah, bad bad golfer's over here because he wants to run back and say, I was over there and I attacked him. <laughs> Will you pet me on my back now? I did it all for you. Yep. I love yep, you, well, FBS. He- You're great. You have no neck. I love you. <laughs> I don't even have to talk about FBS. You guys do it for me. Seriously, people, Where if you've you been like over there, if you're talking smack about me, let me know if, uh, for real. Don't put bullshit up here. I like to know if you, you know how you you, could, you know how you could tell someone's a drug addict if their sneaker connections are feel if their sneaker collection is feel a feel a boot sneakers and like Adidas if those if that's your shoe collection you're a drug addict because those shits you could get them at fucking excuse me you could get them at he's a maxinista with his clothes he loves hey. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington Coat Factory. He makes those runs. My wife keep goes. Your, keep an old school said, Lee looks like he eats too many hamburgers. No, I don't really, but I eat too many fucking ribs, though. Okay. Ribs down. Yeah, where well, he lives, ribs are good. Bad golfer likes, piss, likes pissing videos. Okay. American doctors only care about money. They kill a whole generation of kids. You're not joking, people. It's the doctors that are allowing this stuff, it's the pain clinics that are allowing this stuff. And when you're 25 years old and you go in and you tell the doctor you have a bad back and he gives you pain pills. Yep, it used to be that way. Do you, I remember when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, some people were on pills, but not many. Now yeah. it's like every fucking buddy's on them. Yeah. Now I don't, listen, I don't sniff pills. I got to be honest with you. I have sinus problems anyway. It wouldn't work. Hey, Stupidasso says, uh, Padis, whatever the fuck your name is, you're responsible for Vinny wearing a choker on his live, Joe. <laughs> Listen. Jason T says, good I'm afternoon, really about great me. show. By the way, Joe has a good sense of humor. Be a good guy to crush a few beers with. Joe would be fun to drink with. But, I, but if he comes in with his cap like that, I don't know him. If you guys didn't talk crap about the way I dressed in my hats and stuff, I w- I dressed completely different. Oh, you dress completely good. different. What is your wife thinking about you dressing like a twelve-year-old kid from the ghetto? She thinks I'm a. She makes fun of me all the time. She says I'm like living in the eighties. I don't. That's a good decade to live. If I could live in any decade, it'd be the eighties. Listen, when these guys make fun of me on here and she sees it. She goes crazy laughing. <laughs> oh, she does. She's like, they gotta get in touch with me. You could give them some more info. Does she realize how many people make fun of you, though? A lot. It's too much to keep up with. Hey, people. But one thing about- you do, if you do something like Ryan did, she's looking to put the hit out on him. Mustache Pete. What a dick mustache Pete is, people. Westy you hit it right on the button. And do you see how much money he gives out to his leader? Tim Reed. Oh, Tim Reed. Tim Reed is about f- five foot two. He's he, he looks like the old Jeff Nadu. Did you guys know that? Not the new Jeff Nadu, not the handsome Jeff Nadu that we have now. I'm talking about the old Jeff Nadu. You could put Tim Reed's head on that. And there you go, right there. Okay, BK Finest, uh, New York Connect with a tucked shirt and a fanny pack. You got a fanny pack, dude? Joe? I have a fanny pack. Yep, I have you a fanny a, pack. You got a fanny pack? I do, yep. 
those things went out of style in 1986. They're coming back. You watch and see. <laughs> I sw I guarantee you they're coming back. I guarantee you they're coming back. So yesterday, everybody Did I say hi to Josie? To who? Did, did you see Josie's video? She did, did a video about Vinny. And I, I wasn't like. On yet. Oh no, I didn't watch. I didn't watch anything yesterday. I was uh, watching uh, UFC fighting. No, I think she did it today. I just saw it today. I no, respect I... Josie's gangster. Do you ever yeah, hear what Josie gangster. talks about the fights that she's been in? Yeah, well, she talks a lot about you, but it's like really, really. That's why I said you should hook up with her. Okay. He thinks you're hot. I mean, I don't know what it is. Dude, dude, Josie's. He out thinks of my you're really hot. Head. Jo Josie's out of my No, life. she thinks you're hot. She says he always looks like he's sweating on there. He looks like he's hot. No fucking sweat no. coming on. Look at that. That's fucking that's dry, man. No sweat. I'm not one of these fat people that sweat, okay? <laughs> I got good glands. It's hard to tell if you're fat because you only put, like, your face on the screen. Is Dude, that for a good at, reason? I was, or? Looking at some, I was looking at some pictures from six years ago when I lost a shitload of weight. Man, I look good. Yep. Yeah. Fuck. The last two years, yeah, I, know. I gained fucking weight. Well, listen, right now you look like you got more chins than a Chinese phone book. I could tell you that much. Just coming from a guy that dresses like look a Look at that picture of Mike. Look at that picture of Mike. He's he's like a, he's like Derek Zoolander the way he poses. Look at him. He's looking ahead. He's got the high cheekbones. Look at him. Derek I Zoolander. Go, I like PK that. Challenge. I'm going to drop the link. I'd like you to come on here because... There's people threatening to beat you up. I like you to come talk about it. <laughs> so no, gonna him. A, I'm gonna put a link there, BK. Jump on here and talk about all the threats you've been getting lately. Like you're a skinny pussy, and they're gonna beat you up, and you can't fight. I mean, I I've been hearing a lot of that, BK. Um, well, let him so, come on. I gotta get going. My girlfriend's breaking my chops right now, so I gotta go. Smack her. Now I gotta head home. No, no problem. My family's brother. kicking me out. Uh, no problem, brother. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me on. Just Josie. Thank you, sweetie. Thank everyone in the chat. I love you guys. Everyone's a stand-up guy except a couple. You know who they are. I will definitely talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Yep. You take care of it, man. Okay, Daniel. Daniel says, uh, Lee shows are much better than FBS. I can't stand him. He's a fully... Yeah, well, you know, some everybody their own. The guy has a nice little crew that follows him and stuff and... You know, guys, I'm not going to get into this fucking bashing him because you know why? It's one thing I want to prove to you people that I'm not the one that's going to break any. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what the hell happened. That was weird. Okay, so I'm going to take some of these comments. Uh, if you guys want to say anything, you're more than welcome. Uh, the turd bird was a fan, then I got blocked for an eternity, so now I don't care. You okay? Yeah, I, I didn't drop that, dude. I, my, my fucking signal just dropped. Someone stole his signal. <laughs> yeah, I'll never live that one down, Mickey, will I? Someone steal your signal again. Okay. <laughs> Let 
not the, I don't know. I just went, it just went down and that was that. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, FBS, we are all joking with you. Yeah, right. Picture that. Okay, well, listen. Let him talk, people. Remember one thing. Who gave up on the truce first? The people that give up on the truce first are the people that have no content whatsoever. Their only content is attacking people. That's it. They can't even talk. They don't talk about anything. And then they live in this world where they think they're going to get interviews and stuff. Nobody will interview when they see that shit. And that may have happened with me and Russo. He may have come over, looked at some of my stuff and said, look, this guy attacks a lot. So we have to correct that. What we have to do is not attack and just do shows. But, you know, you and the people that claim that they're like the smartest and the coolest people are the ones that attack the most. Mickey was talking shit. Oh, Mickey always talks shit in his chat. Are you kidding me? That's what Mickey's all about. Mickey will come over here and be nice. Do you know that Mickey got a hold of me on uh, Facebook? Not Facebook, but Twitter. Seems like a nice guy and stuff. And then when he went over back into that room, all he did was start talking shit. And he seems like an okay guy, but he's just one of those guys that you can't trust in reality. One of those backstabbing guys. That's Mickey Griggs. That's who he is. Well, you know something, the truth, um, the, the, the people I got lined up for interviews, you'll see. That's all I could say. A lot of people aren't going to be happy, but oh well. If your water heater went out, would you ask for donations? Honestly, if I needed the money, why not? No one's going to give you money if they don't want to give you money. If the guy's water heater went out and people wanted to help him, you know, let's that's the reality, people. No one's going to give us money if they do not want to give us money. And if they do give us money and they don't want to give us money, they're stupid. You know, that's the thing. You know, people that give their money out, they're, they're entitled to give their money to whoever they want, whenever they want. And so if people want to help people fix their water heater or get computers or help a dog, they're more than welcome. As long as we're not sitting here begging for money. You know, what do you think of Cain Vasquez? Uh, would you do? Cain Vasquez really fucked up because all he had to do was pull the guy out of the car and beat the shit out of him, beat him to death. The guy was a child, molested his child. What Cain Vasquez did that was wrong, though, he started shooting at a car with a woman in it and another guy that weren't child molesters, and he shot one man in the arm. You know, I understand Cain Vasquez being upset and stuff, but you can't get away with that. You know, he's going to personally, I think he should take it to the jury. I don't think any jury is going to find him guilty. They're basically going to say temporary insanity. He'll lose his gun. At least his gun was legal. And it's very hard to get a legal gun in California. His gun was legal. And when he shot, the, but he shot an innocent person in the arm. Uh, so that's an issue that he's going to have to deal with. He should get bail. It's ridiculous that they have not given this man bail. The guy that molested his daughter was out on no bail. And he molested this guy's daughter. So something's wrong. But then again, this is California that this happened in. Uh, what was your your take on the Smiths? I don't know. Listen, I spoke to the Smith uh, to Donna Smith. Is that her name? Through email a few times. She seems like a nice woman. I've never had no issue with her. I know that she's having issues with Grant, um, but I don't know the Smiths. I can't any any time I've dealt with the Smiths. Well, with her, she's been nice to me. She she sent me a couple. Uh, uh, emails having a discussion with me when she was mad, she said something. At least she had the decency to get through hold of me through email. She doesn't attack me. I mean, I don't, I disagree with what's going on right now, but 
I really have no problems with the Smiths. So I can't say I do. I don't want anybody to get mad at me, but I can't create a problem with the Smiths if I don't have one. Thanks, Lee, for putting on such great content. Always a pleasure watching you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ma Magmood Ari. Hey, when Magmood started out, me and him had issues in the beginning. I don't know if you remember that, Magmood. So you came around, and I appreciate the fact that you came around. Uh, I'll come on next time, bro. Not the best time right now. I'm with some friends. No problem, BK. You're welcome on the show anytime. Mickey is YouTube 24-7. Well, what, Mickey lives on YouTube. Has anybody here tried to figure? Okay. I ended my show and I'm still on 119. Hmm. First of all, I don't know if this is the real one. And second of all, God bless you. I'm glad you are. It doesn't bother me. Do you understand that? It bothers you, dude. It doesn't bother me. Okay. But you, did you notice something, though? If that was FBS, he can come in here because he's not blocked. I can't go on his show. I can't even put a comment because I'm blocked. I can't go on Angel's show because I'm blocked. But Angel can come in here any time because she's not blocked. That's what it comes down to. When someone says something negative to me, if you are in here, FBS, I like to tell you this. When somebody comes in here and, they, and they're negative, I don't block them unless they're really bad. But you, you block anybody if they say the littlest negative thing to you. And you must really be bothered by my show's numbers if you got to come in here and tell me about you having 119 and you're not on. That means you have 119 people that have no life and they're still on your channel. That's all that means. I don't wish your show the worst. You are ruining your own show. I don't have to do it for you. So that's that. And like I said, you're even welcome to come on here right now and talk to me. Any way you want. I'm not going to block you. Because you haven't been disrespectful. You're disrespectful to me in your show, but you're not disrespectful to me in the chat room. He has no content. Keep up the great work, Lee. There is a reason you and Jeff and the Dude channels have stopped growing con have, haven't stopped growing content. That's right. And that's what it's all about. It's how you grow. And who listens to your show and who likes your show. Now, I don't want to hurt no one's feelings, but... I we literally had a uh, had a show come out of the place and research all of us, research our interview style, and they decided that my interview style was the best. Take it for whatever you want. It's like a tortoise in the here. It doesn't matter how you start; it matters how you finish. Remember that. Federal, I see that. He's on the mic as we speak, talking about water heaters. God bless him. He was chasing a car. He could, couldn't stop. If so, he shot the car and hit the driver who was the molester's dad. Yes, he was the molester's dad, but what does that have to do with anything, Joe Cole? Was, he was not the molester. You just can't start shooting up cars and shooting people that you're not after. Come on, admit it. Cain made a mistake. But I think the smartest thing for him to do is take it to trial. No trial, no jury is going to find him guilty. And they know that. They're just going to hold him. They're going to eventually give him, right now, that he can come up with two, $3 million bail because even his friends that are millionaires want to get him out of prison. And they're not, they don't, you know, because he had a legal gun in California, they're going to make an example of him. That's what it comes down to. He should have just, it's like Joe Rogan said. Joe Rogan said that Kane should have beat the guy to death. If he beat the guy to death, no jury would have convicted him. And that's that. But he didn't do that. He made a mistake. You know, but you know, when you have a child that's molested 
and you're angry, nobody knows what they're going to do. I mean, you don't care what anybody does. Do you know what it's like when I hear these people up on here, uh, like uh, these scumbags calling me a pedophile? Like this piece of shit, Ray Ramundi? You know, it's the worst thing you can call a human being. But it's but that's how you could tell what a person is as a human being. When you call another person that you have no evidence that they're a child molester, a child molester. And it's like I said, if Anthony Ramundi calls me a child molester to my face, the Los Angeles police are coming. And if you're watching this, Anthony, say it to my face while I'm there like a man. You say it over the internet. You said it again the other day on that new show you were on. The show that you weren't even supposed to be on because now you're breaking you're breaking an agreement that you made. You're still out there with your big mouth. And you said it again about me. Anthony Ramundi, this is the deer. I dare you to say that to my face. I'm hoping you say that to my face. Because you know what I know about you, Anthony Ramundi? I know you're 70 years old. I know that you've got a cane and you could barely walk. So you're not the tough guy you pretend to be. He would just be watching. Okay, let's see. FBS, go look up. The Rico actually is, yeah, well, nobody will ever come on this show ever and discuss using the feds to get to, to frame somebody or to go after somebody. That was bottom level low life stuff right there. Jimmy Calandra could not have gotten any lower that day than that day. I mean, to say that he's going to work with the feds to go after a guy that's not doing anything wrong, that's what you got. These guys are punks. That's what they are. They're they are like weasels. They're punks. They're back behind this thing right here, and they're so tough. Jimmy inviting people to go into a garage. What are you going to do when someone takes you up on that? What are you going to do? I've seen your videos. I've seen how you throw punches and kicks. There's nothing professional there. Nothing. And for you to be telling people that you're going to beat them up and take you into the garage or whatever. And for some strange reason, people think you're a rugged and tough. You could tell a street fighter. If that's how you throw hands and punches, there's no street fighter there. I think I thought the Smiths were cool, but Grant's my man. Yeah, they, they're they going at it right now. I, I It's unfortunate they are. You started off bashing A-Light, now you're a wannabe FBI agent. They, they cannot bash A-Light no more. Once you... Once you bring someone on and they talk about working with the feds to go after somebody, you cannot go after a light no more. You lost. That goes for everybody. You can't. When you, I've had people on other channels here bring up old emails I sent them and old messages that had nothing to do with this show whatsoever. Nothing to do with this channel whatsoever. That's being a rat. So you can't go after John A. Light no more. Because you're no better. No better at all. And that's the funny thing. Everybody likes to call people rats and all that stuff. And the people that are calling people rats are usually the biggest fucking rats going. And that's what was proven tonight that they went after Dominic like that. It was disgusting. It was probably the lowest night out of this genre. It was probably the lowest thing that you could possibly see. When a guy that shot a woman, a guy that put a man in prison, goes on and talks about using the feds to get RICO charges on somebody. You can't make this shit up, people. How much lower can you get than that? 
You can't get lower than that. And it's like I said, I disagree with some of the things with Dom. But I talk to him through emails and we discuss it. You would never see me come on here bashing Dom. Captain. Now, Captain, you're not going to be unblocked. If you say anything, if you say the little thing wrong, you are blocked. That's how these channels are. They will block you because they cannot take criticism. That's not really a high number, uh, Redzilla. You know, I have maybe like 200 and something people blocked. And what I try to do is I try to unblock the bad ones and give them a second chance. And usually they'll come back right away and say something really bad. But if you're going to be blocked, block somebody for a reason. Don't block them because they said, hey, you suck. Don't block them for that. Now, if they say something about, about you as a human being, that's like maybe if you're called a child molester, you know, something like that. These guys have the thinnest fucking skin going. Who has a thinner skin than Jimmy Calandra? You could see through that skin. That's how thin his skin is. He cannot take an ounce of criticism. Right away, he's ready to call the cops. FES, you have uh, 130. But, you know, see, that's the perpetual motion. That's the thing, though. I don't care how many people he has. I don't care how many views he does. Nothing. He cares that about me. But he'll tell everybody otherwise. I have 160 in here right now. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with, because most people that come on here and start, and this is where we're blessed. FBS, this goes for you too. We're blessed because we can come on here and we got a nice amount of people watching us. That's what it comes down to. You got people that come on here and they get 20, 30 views and then they have five hour shows. That's embarrassing. Anthony, I know you're not in that chat room no more. Hop on FBS just for kicks. I had my last account banned the other day because I was bringing up inconvenient facts for him. Redzilla, what's up, bro? Okay. He still has 119 because they go to the chat, not for his show. Okay, Vern, let's see. 1313. What time is it? Oh, I'm only 10 minutes behind. Good. It's fun watching you talk to FBS as if he's there, he's online, or even home for that matter. Take notes from the do and Lee. Redzilla, I'm embarrassed for him. FBS Mono, if I can't beat them, then I block them. Sis, I have Pete's 130 views, a handful of blue names talking. I can't even keep up with my chat room. This chat room goes crazy, people. But you buy focals. How you doing? Uh, according to FBS, everyone else is a piece of shit, and he is the beacon of truth, and his brainwashed simps believe him. The leftists. They're lefties. That's who believes them. Joe Electric, I'm pretty sure that most people's live shows. Most people on live shows, I see people on live shows that get 30 people and they start up their shows and stay on for three hours talking shit and no one's listening to them. I mean, have you guys seen an highlight show? He'll have 20 people in there. And he'll be talking about everything and everyone and talking about everything he's done in his life. He'll have 20 people watching him. And I don't even know if they're watching him. 
because it's easy to fall asleep during that time. Hey, FBS, if you're watching, where did you get the Jordache jeans from? They still sell them shits. BK is here. <laughs> okay. Johnny Brocasco, he buys his clothes with his milk and bread. Hey, listen, people, I'm not no one to insult no one's clothes because, let's face it, I dress the way I dress. Uh, but to me, all you guys dress pretty good. <laughs> You know, I don't see, you know, nice sneakers, nice shirts, nice clothes. Once you go to the garage, an FBI agent will be waiting to arrest you. <laughs> You'll go into the garage and there'll be a group. Gianni, that's funny. There'll be a group of guys waiting there to arrest you, right? Or just before the fight starts, they'll all run in. And then they'll arrest you for wanting to hit a government witness. Lee, when he throws a punch, he's trying to break his own fingers. He punches with his fingers out. Yeah, you know, I seen the video. I'm sorry, man. Anybody that 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 was not. If you cannot throw good punches, don't do a video. That's what it comes down to. And if you can't win an argument, don't threaten to call the feds. Do you guys remember when everybody loved MRE? Everybody was his buddy. And then slowly that changed over a period of time. The people that used to love MRE don't love him no more. Now, MRE and I, we went at it for a month. And that was in the very beginning, like six, seven months ago. I did all sorts of videos about him. He did shows about me. We were just tearing each other up. And then one day we talked, I told him what was bothering me, he told me it was bothering him, and that was it, it was over. No, you know, that's it. And that's it, And but this is what people do. It's, it's a shame when you got people coming on here and they got great content and they start attacking people because they get better views. And you got other, other channels doing that right now where they've never done this before. They've never attacked people. But now that's become their new format, where they attack people because they get better views. If you sit here and talk shit about everybody, you'll have 200 people watching your shows every night. That simple. That simple. Put out content and see how many people you have. That's when you know whether you have a good enough show. When I put out content, I get anywhere from, say, 14 to 22, 2300. Any attack video I've done, I've always gotten over 2,000. Easy. Easy. But the best videos I've ever done, that I got good reviews. I did one last month and got 11,000 on Sammy Gavano. The next day, I did another one on him and got 9,000. The next day after that, I got another 9,000. And that was on Sammy Gavano. You know, Italy, they accuse him of celebrating the death of their child. They never screenshot the comment and no proof. There's, I have not seen no proof on that whatsoever. First of all, if he did that, he's wrong. Okay, 100% wrong. But I think that you got to show the evidence before you say that. If it's worth bringing up, it's worth showing the evidence. It's like people saying, are these little low lives calling me a child molester? Can you please bring up the evidence? You know, I'm, I'm 60 years old. So if I was a child or a, a, a low life pedo, I would be in some record somewhere. I would be in state write-ups. There'd be something. But see, that's the thing. People like to go after people with no proof. None. Another thing. I'm a druggie. I pop pills, no proof whatsoever. But you know, people, when people hate you so much, they want to hear that stuff. How about the one, I'm not from New York. The other day I heard this person call me saying that I was a redneck from Texas. People, I moved to Texas 
when I was 59 years old. Never been in Texas. I was never even in Texas. When I was 59 years old, I moved to Texas. And now I'm a hillbilly from Texas. I spent the first, until 1992, I lived in New York. I worked in Manhattan most of my life. And I worked for, I worked in Brooklyn for 10 years for the same company. So people will say, I don't work. I've never been in New York. But the people saying this are the ones that have never lived in New York. And I lived in New York during the greatest period of time. I lived in New York and Brooklyn in the 1980s and 90s. The greatest time to live in New York. Brooklyn's done now. When I lived in Brooklyn, it was, you know, you had your Italian neighborhoods, you had your Spanish neighborhoods, your black neighborhoods. You had neighborhoods everywhere, but they were all neighborhoods. Now there's no such thing. Now the neighborhoods are mixed with Russians, Indians, uh, Italians are moving out. No, the Irish are moving out. You know, there's, it's nothing where, like it used to be. Nothing. It appears the Mob 2 drama is spilling into other areas of mob genre. Those two channels, Mob Facts and uh, Hizaki, are beefing now. And I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Uh, maybe they're watching here and they're seeing that, hey, let's dox people. Well, let's do low life shit like that. Yes, he does, Amber, talk about the ego out of control. Yep, the ego. How about they're all jealous of me? They got to talk about me. If they don't talk about me, they don't have no ratings or nobody watches them. My numbers are always around the same, people, and I barely talk about that human being. And the only time I talk about him is when he brings me up. Then it's protecting yourself. BK Charlotte knew. And you know what's funny, too, when they talk about my health, I'm 61 years old. I want to see these motherfuckers get to my age. You know, I don't, I've never smoked cigarettes ever. I don't drink at all. I do not do drugs. I don't do any of those things that will kill you before your time. I've lost a sister and I've lost a brother in the last three years from drugs. They paid the price for being addicted, for being addicts. They paid the price with their life. So, you know, if you're out there and you're 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 puffing away on that cigarette one right after another, don't make fun of a man in their 60s because you're never going to get there. And if you do, you're going to have lung cancer and you're going to have a horrible ending. Horrible. Or you're going to have uh what do they call that uh when you can't breathe, emphysema. And emphysema is a brutal thing to have, especially when you smoke cigarettes. And you, if you smoke all day long, you're eventually going to get emphysema. That's a horrible death. You could spend five years on an oxygen machine not being able to catch your breath. My fat ass right now, I could get out of here. I could walk around here. I could walk a mile. I don't lose my breath. And... I'm a fat, overweight man, but you know what? I never did the evils of drugs. I never did the evils of smoking or the evils of drinking. That simple. I'm here right now doing this show, being the most sober motherfucker on the face of the earth. I'm as sober as I can be. I'm as sober as any human being can possibly be right now. BK, take care. Thank you for being here. I wonder how Shemtels feel about the, well, good question. They say that about Sammy, but let's say it about everybody. If you killed somebody that's innocent, they're like, maybe he does. And he was just saying that he isn't the only content creator that reads comments. Gunner had a good interview with lady journalists who wrote Sonny Francis' book. 
Gunner's a good guy, man. He he gets a lot of unfair bullshit. And he's another one. People talk shit about Gunner, but would they say that shit to Gunner's face? No. They might talk a good game, talk about how tough they are, but none of them would say that to Gunner's face. And Gunner's a nice guy. I could pick up the phone and talk to Gunner anytime I want. He calls me, we say hi. Never done anything negative to me. He's one of the good guys in this whole thing. And yet you have people attacking him. Why? Because some people love to attack big, tough guys on the internet. Because they feel tough. But they would never tell him shit to his face. And I'm not talking about, yeah, I would tell him to his face. No, I mean, get in your fucking car, go to his house, tell him to meet you somewhere, and tell him to his fucking face. Then we know you're tough. Anthony Ramundi is going to have the privilege of calling me a pedo to my face. And I can guarantee you this. The minute he calls me a pedo to my face, there's going to be something very bad happening. Not because I'm a tough guy, but because he's in front of me. Jerry Lair, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm literally agreeing with you, and you're just adding a lot of people. Re well, Joey Electric's different, Joe Piney. <laughs> so. I'm trying to catch up here to the end people, give you guys some. I've been on a while here. They make a way for MRE. Uh, they make fun of the way MRE talks, but the first they loved them the way they all loved them. They were all kissing his ass. And once he went against them, now they're all hating on him. That's it. And you know why? Because MRE has the best members out of everybody. Uh, if you look at it, MRE has the best likes he has the bet uh, i mean the most likes he'll do a video if he has like say 1600 views he'll get a shitload of likes more than any of us because people that go on mre show like his show very few people go on mre or mre show if they don't like his show and our mre is not about the he's not about the views either he'll do shows on like the military serial killers where he doesn't get big views, but he does the shows because he likes doing them. So you got to give him that whether you like him or not, but people don't like him now because he takes certain stances. And certain people are his friend, but they're friends with the people that hate him too. Makes no fucking sense. You realize the MRE is good Aryan stuff. Well, I'm not v Vern Schillinger, really. You can't get worse than Vern Schillinger. So who would be, remember Vern Schillinger, his little lover boy there that he carved his, uh, his little insignia on the guy's ass? Who would be him? I could picture Adam Kadem, John Wolf, as Vern Schillinger. I definitely can. Remember the early days when MRE said block John Wolf that much? Hey, listen, a lot of people said that about John Wolf. John Wolf could be my friend one day, but then he's attacking me the next. That's what I like about John. Then he'll come on my show the next day like he never did nothing wrong. That's John. Couldn't say it better than that. No, they can't pitch, pick apart. They cannot pick apart his arguments. They cannot. They can try to, but they can't. Nope, the worst out of the, out of all of them, Lee. Uh, you, FBS, everyone else with all their bullshit, shitting drama. Let's see how much you can actually talk about Tommy, and if it's full of factual inaccuracies like that. Joey Frakes, whatever the fuck you are. Joey, every day this week I have done a content show. It doesn't matter. When you, when when guys like you that come up with these names, this ain't who you are. This is a different name. I've never seen this name before. 
So you're just one of these weirdos that don't have the balls to use your same name. But you know what? Every day this week I have put up a show talking about whether it's Johnny Batero, DeMeo, and I get attacked when I do that. You know what? Because people don't have shit to use. I might be talking a little drama right now, but I already put in the Tommy Patera show. Even brought someone on. But it's still not enough. Especially for the scumbags. When someone has to tell you how smart they are, they're not smart people. Lee, Boston P., I'm 60. I find it. Why should I find a different hobby? I love playing fantasy sports. And I enjoy. There's no reason for me to find a hobby. Another hobby. You know why? Because I make about maybe 600, 700 every month doing this. Just sitting down here and talking to you guys. And I'm not greedy. I'm happy with six, seven hundred dollars a month. You know why? Because I have a roof over my head, my rent's paid, my electric's paid out of my pocket. I have my own car. I put my own gas in the car. I don't ask nobody for shit. But according to these people, I'm on subsidy, food stamps, and uh, rent control, like I'm a drug addict and a child molester. It's all fucking comical, people. It's the only thing they got. And it's all fucking lies. Everything, every part of it is a fucking lie. Except the fact that I'm 60, Boston P. And what do you know? You're from Boston and you're a fucking Boston Red Sox fan. So you suck nuts. Okay, Boston P, let me guess. A coward because he doesn't show his face and name. Yeah, well, Boston P, you don't show your face and name. I don't see your face and name, Boston P. All we know that you're zero, a scumbag uh, Boston Red Sox fan. Texas is dry, hot state. It kind of sucks. Adam, you're wrong. Uh, I am in northwest Texas, southwest Texas. I'm sorry. I'm in southwest Texas where the weather is beautiful. If you go down to Houston, the weather sucks. But up here, the weather is. And, and wait, Adam, you're from fucking Louisiana. How can you insult any state? There is no state in this country as shitty as Louisiana. 100% humidity every day. There's only one safe street in New Orleans now, and that's only safe because the tourist goes there. If you go on any other street in New Orleans, you're putting your life at risk. So, Adam, when you move from New Orleans, you could tell us how sucky some place is because no, no place sucks as much as New Orleans. Boston P, are you? Yes, without a doubt, he's a cult member. Lee, next time you're on, drop the link. I'm going to be ready. Uh, I'm going to be ready in, in Skateros. Oh, that'd be cool, dude. I'd love that. Now, for you people that don't know, I worked for Skateros for 10 years. And yet I'm not from New York. You know, I was in the Meat Cutters Union and worked for Skateros on 11th in Brooklyn. That's how much I don't know anything about Brooklyn. But thanks, uh, X can RCX, uh, let me know. I would love to do that. Little Italy should be renamed Little... Yeah, oh, it's awful now. I was watching um, the best... What I consider the best mob show is uh, the one with the truck, the guy that drives around in the truck. I love his show. I consider it the best mob show on here. And uh, he was driving through Little Italy, and he said that it's only... Little Italy is basically one block long now, and everything else is Chinese around it. So Little Italy is dying, too. New York in general, New York City has lost its culture and everything else. It's a shame. Vern Sheldon, well, he's not lying. A fake version of him came into your chat earlier. You knew it wasn't really him, yet you still talked about him. Okay, Vern, do you want to run back? What do you want to do, Vern? Showing your face means nothing, but facts mean everything. Great point. Chicago muscle common sense are held in a pedestal, fake names, and average. Let me tell you something. 
anybody that holds common sense on a pedestal, anybody that thinks common sense is smart, or he's a lawyer, he's no lawyer. He's he has no common sense has nothing nothing to do with the law. He's a guy that thinks he's smart. See, there's a difference. He's not smart. First of all, he writes in caps, and he has two two avatars in one chat if you watch this I, I can't think of the name of the other chat it's always with him and they both write in caps and they both write the exact same way he's the type of guy that if you play fantasy if you play in a fantasy baseball league with him he'll have two teams that's who he is as for chicago muscle i don't really have any chicago muscle attacked me a couple of times but he doesn't seem, he seems to attack anybody. Uh, and I think he will attack anybody at any time. I'll take Chicago muscle over common sense anytime. Common sense is just this little dweeby moron that people think he's smart. The people that think he's smart are the uneducated ones. That man is not smart. And common sense, I hope you've seen that, you bitch. But anyway, someone needs to super chat. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. It's too bad Tony Pizza had his fans mass flag John Wolf's channel. Did anybody notice that that Tony had uh, two shows he did in a row? One had 6,000, the other one had 7,000 views. And then the following day, he was down to 500 views and 300 views and 400 views. That's what people should talk about. Because there are definitely people here buying subs, and but it's usually the ones that are doing all the huffing and puffing. My grandma's 97, has been smoking since she, but just because she smoked doesn't mean you definitely have it. The odds, Canarsie, are is if you smoke, you're going to have an oil. My father lost a lung to smoking, and after he lost his lung, he never smoked. He lived another seven years and went to work. I never smoked again. The story it was, is, and always will be. Oh, I love Silvio. I lived down by Dittmar's Boulevard when I was married to my first wife. And what I used to love about Dittmar's Boulevard was the Greek food and where you could buy real gyros, where they got the lamb and the beef, real lamb and beef hanging on the spindle. And you can have it or pisticcio or masaka. Great. Great uh, Greek food. And to me, Greek food is the best food if it's made correctly. Walking is good. You're dealing with elements and whatever comes along. You just, you can't just drive off yet. I like taking my drop, my dog. I take my dogs for a ride every night at about six o'clock. I take them out for an hour. They hang out the windows they have a great time. They act like assholes. They bark at everything. They love barking at other dogs. But if I was walking them, they wouldn't be barking at other dogs because they're cowards. Uh, but I love taking my dogs for rides. No, bro, you say thank you to the people for saving your dog. Then you say people suck. You just sounded stupid to me. Kevin Myers. Whatever, bro. Hey, Kevin, you got that don't tread on America flag and stuff? And most of the people in this room are just like you, and yet you come in here with your fucked up attitude. What is that about? Are you one of these fake Trump people that go goes and you pray at the feet of a Biden person? Is that who you are, Kevin Myers? See, you are in a room right now where 95% of us are Trump people. And whoever is a Biden person in this room is welcome. As long as they don't start talking silly shit. Um, but Kevin, what are you? Are you a real Trump person? Are you just a person that likes to pray at the feet of people that hate Trump? I see a lot of yous around here doing that. I personally have had issues with Gunner. Seems like a pleasant enough guy. He is a he's a good guy. Gunner has a good life. He lives with a. He seems to be in love with the woman he's with. 
he hunts, he fishes. And then, you know, people send out this shit begging for money and stuff. And then they, they claim it's Gunner. You know, Gunner sent me the same, uh, something came from Gunner uh, asking for money. And it came into my two of my accounts. And right away, you know what I did? I called Gunner and asked him what they were. And then he said to me, Lee, someone got into my account and hacked my accounts. But, you know, instead of accusing him of doing that, you know, the first thing I did is I called Gunner and checked up. And Gunner told me right off the bat. And that was right as soon as it happened. So right away, I knew that he was hacked. And then you had people coming on here saying Gunner wasn't hacked, that he was looking for money. Never seen a guy die on a bar stool, but I've seen him drop dead jogging in 65 and cold beer. Good show, Lee. Hey, Rick, great point. Uh, like Norm. You know, everybody waited for Norm to drop dead, but Norm just hung on that bar stool. All 400 pounds of him. He had no trouble hanging on that bar stool. It's hilarious to see people call Gunner. Yeah, it is. I don't know about that, people. Exactly. You tell them all the time how smart uh, you tell us all the time how smart you are. Can you give me an example? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm book smart. You know, I, I butcher the I butcher the English language. But if I sit down and took a test, I would do really well on it. I'm really good at history. But I suck at common sense. I've always filled that class. Always. I'm Gunsmoke. I've been on FBS and Gunsmoke's pages from the beginning, begging those losers when all you dorks were on his dick. Okay. <laughs> Dylan McClay, your trouble with the capital T. The truth of people who are saying, hey, Dylan, why are you, you're here and like you're bitching like a little girly man. We'll let you stay. But is this like what you do in your life? You have nothing to do but come on here and bitch? What kind of life do you have? Can you explain your boring life to us and why it sucks so much that you got to come on here? And do this, but if you feel good, you go right ahead. That's right. I live in New England area, but I'm a Yankee fan. Damn straight. I'm a Yankee fan too. No, I don't. No, I don't gamble. Gamble is one of those things, harvest of the sorrow, that is as evil as uh, smoking cigarettes and drinking liquor and doing drugs. Uh, I don't gamble because if I do gamble, I would like it too much. It's like me. I could never live in Las Vegas because I would wind up at the casinos and I would become one of those people standing by the slots waiting for a dream to happen. So I stay away from gambling. I play uh, Yahoo and ESPN leagues and I don't play for money. We do it for fun. Some of my some of my leagues I've been in for 25 years. I commission a couple of leagues that the same guys have been playing for 25 years in my leagues. If anybody's looking for a team, let me know. Because I have a couple available teams and a couple legs. John, how you doing? Lee, how old uh, were you when you lived in Boston? Ever go? Uh, I was uh, 18 and 19 years old when I lived in Boston and worked in the combat zone. And uh, I lived in Cambridge at that time. I was living at the YMCA. And don't no fucking wise remarks. Uh, I was living at the Y in Cambridge. There's two Ys in Boston. There's one in Boston. There's one in Cambridge. And I used to live there because it was the uh, Y there was by Harvard Square. And uh, no place in the world like a Friday or Saturday night in Harvard Square. It is back then especially. And I would pretend I went to Harvard. I would pick up girls by telling them I went to Harvard and I knew certain classes at Harvard and stuff. If you went there and you acted like you were in Harvard, they believe you. When you said you were, went to Harvard, they would treat you totally different. But you know, yes, that was a scam. 
I'm going to send you some food from script. Oh, my gosh. BK, I could use some of that good Italian. You know what I could use from uh, Scuturo's? Uh, Supersod, Mortadella, which you can't find Mortadella anywhere. Mortadella, uh, Supersod, any type of Italian salami, uh, prosciutto, uh, prosciutto. I mean, man, I, BK, there's just stuff you cannot get anywhere else besides New York when it comes to Italian food. Could you imagine common sense representing you in court? It'd be like a drunk guy in my cousin Vinny. Yeah, and he'd be writing in caps. He'll be talking in caps. See, have you ever looked, seen what he looked like? Oh, my gosh, people. He accidentally showed his face one time. If you've seen him, you would understand why. Thank you for being a fan, D-Truth. Chicago Muscle is 1%, and who knows about his service he claims to have. Boy, I've been on two and a half hours. What the hell? Okay. Didn't realize it, people. Joey Electric, don't forget FBS viewers are also Tony Pizza viewers and were normed uh, uh, when pizza pooped. Do you guys remember that when he pooped in a peel? Someone was telling me about that and he pissed in a bottle. Only Tony would do that. Tony just does not care. Sure, I have the same type as you, Lee. Can you show us your diploma again? <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that, uh, Dylan. Uh, no, you don't have the same life as me. I can guarantee you that. Lee, why do you always post the same people's posts? I see some good ones that you are not posting. See that? I just posted yours. We have casinos in Detroit. Yes, you do. Left oh, Lee, you're so Lee, you're a man in a man in my oh gosh. Hey, you know what? Hey, 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 I'm just glad you're here. I'm I just like to know who you are. Maybe for 20 minutes, but I get bored really quick. Well, John. Well, John, you've been here a long time, so I'm guessing that you weren't bored. Okay, people. It's been two and a half hours. I enjoyed my show today. I appreciate you guys coming on. I'll be doing a live tomorrow. And uh, now they have plenty of content. So you're, I'm sure you're going to see the others talking shit. They need content because they don't have no content. But everyone, let, let me finish this show out with my favorite, Don Vito. I'll always go back to Josie's video called Romantic Side of Tony Pizza when I need a good laugh. Okay, wait. You're right, Lee. When I play fantasy, I play in paid leagues. People that play in free leagues are losers. <laughs> Maybe that's why I play in the free league, brother. Because I'm a loser. No, actually, people that play in free leagues are smart. They play it for fun, not for money. When you play fantasy sports for money, it's not fun. Because then it becomes cutthroat. I like to play in a fantasy league that's not cutthroat. And you know what? Uh, being that you're in a league, uh, you're more than, you know, let me know if you want to join one of my leagues. I got a, I have a good team that came in second place last year that is available if you want to join. Everybody take care. Thank you all for being here. Time for me to go. I'm going to make some uh, barbecue ribs tonight. And it takes about four hours to make them. And uh, I'm going to take my dogs out. I appreciate you people being here. You've uh, given me a good Sunday, and I appreciate it. Everybody take care. God bless you. God bless America. Vote 2024 for Donald Trump. Goodbye.